Let's discuss that Apple event with the AirTags, the Apple TV, the iPad Pro, iMac and that great purple iPhone 12. As usual, the event was filmed perfectly, the format was superb and the compact one hour duration allowed them to quickly go through all the products they had in store for us without confusing us with too many details and I think it was just right and the visuals as always looked beautiful. Starting with the Apple TV 4K, they refreshed it, it's got a new model, same name. High refresh rate support for up to 120Hz with HDMI 2.1 and an A12 Bionic for better performance performance in games. At the price it is $179. I did expect an A13 or A14, especially for that arcade compatibility, but the A12 is still a very powerful chip. The major upgrade with this model was that Siri remote and I really like it. The design is significantly thicker but the buttons with that redesigned click pad, that 5 point control allows for more precise navigation than that stupid trackpad on the old remote. And it's even got buttons dedicated to muting the TV and powering it on and off. This was a minor upgrade but I think Apple made the right move here. It's got the same software, many of the same features but this minor upgrade allows it to come into the modern world with better performance for the future. Moving on to AirTags now. They cost $29 for a single one and $99 for a pack of four. And these basically allow you to track the items and they've been leaked for about two years and heavily, heavily rumoured. The design is superb and better than any of the renders could have imagined. The best thing about it is that compatibility with to find my app and your iPhone. If you have an iPhone 11 or iPhone 12 or later, you can actually use a feature called Position Finding, which gives you step-by-step -step directions to your AirTag. So if you're nearby, you can literally get directions in a matter of feet and be taken straight to that AirTag. AirTags work with a load of accessories, which I think Apple is heavily overpriced. They start at about $35, but there will be loads of third-party alternatives available. And you can basically attach it to items like keys, a suitcase, they unveiled these brilliantly as usual and they're such a great product for the price. And they even work with the millions and billions of iPhones sold around the world. So even if you leave your suitcase with your AirTag on in China, people with an iPhone in China will be able to connect to the AirTag and refresh the location and that will appear on the Find My App on your iPhone. Moving on to the new iMac. M1 24 inch 4.5K display. It looks superb. But there's a lot of criticism about this design. And let me explain why and what I think. It's a big step up from the current design which I still really like. But the stand is redesigned to be so much more modern and it uses that industrial design that Apple has been rolling out across its whole lineup. The colours are great, they're vibrant and I understand why Apple has rolled out more colours to the iMac, especially this smaller 24 inch configuration. And it comes in two configurations, both of them with an M1 chip, but one, the cheaper one, has a 7 core and the pricey one, which is arguably the better deal, has an 8 core. But the pricey one also comes with gigabit ethernet in the power supply, which I think is a superb and brilliant innovation. It basically means that you don't need to have an ethernet cable plugged directly into the back of your Mac and it means you you've only got that single cable transferring the power and the ethernet data. And talking about ports, on the back you have the Thunderbox and the USB 3 depending on the configuration you buy. This is disappointing, on my current iMac I have an SD card slot, I have the ethernet directly on the back and I also have four USB A's. But I think this is a limitation of the current M1 and users who want more I.O. should wait for a second or third iteration. Currently the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro only support up to four Thunderbolts and I think Apple will address this with a higher end model soon. And people are complaining about the front with that chin and those white bezels. While the white borders I can understand, it will take some getting used to. But that chin is unique and it's a great design aspect of the iMac. It's been around for years and I don't see any reason for Apple to remove it especially now that they've actually moved most of the computer inside that chin. So that houses the logic board and other components including the redesigned speaker system which Apple says will make the new iMac the best sounding iMac ever. And the iMac speakers are already brilliant. So the complaints about the chin are really stupid. I don't agree with them at all. I think the chin can stay there. I'm not sure why they removed the Apple logo. It could be that there's one already on the back or it might just be to make the front design quite minimal and less distracting. But for professionals, the new iMac Pro or the rebooted 27 inch model that is expected to come later this year will likely use black borders and have a more muted, darker colour palette, so silver, space grey. And this 
is probably what people are hoping for. I personally wouldn't go for this 24 inch model. I don't believe any of the colours bar silver actually fit into my room. But the 27 inch successor will have that larger display which I'm now looking for in a new iMac. And the black borders actually allow for better colour accuracy and less distractions for designers and professional photographers. But overall the iMac is a brilliant package and a major, major upgrade. I can't see why so many people are criticising it for some small design flaws or changes. And the new Magic Keyboard comes with Touch ID which is a feature I'm desperately missing from my Intel based 27 inch iMac and this will be a big selling point for people as well but that M1 chip is that Apple Silicon it provides that power that the Intel chips could never provide and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they evolve the iMac in the coming years because this is a first generation product and if you're somebody who's completely satisfied with a current iMac I'd hold off. In a few years there will likely be support for more ports, even more power, more RAM, more storage and many other great upgrades. So wait a bit, although this new iMac really isn't a bad computer in any way. If you're a new user then you have no reason to wait out for another iMac. This iMac will do suffice, it will be perfectly fine. Finally moving on to the M1 iPad Pro which is a superb upgrade from the 2020 model. Apple moved to the M1 chip which is that same chip I talked about in the new iMac and also in the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro and Mac Mini. They're the Macs, this is the iPad, it still has a Mac chip in. It now supports a stunning 16 gigabytes of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage which is I mean completely ridiculous that goes over $2,000 which is outrageous but it's going to deliver a significant performance boost. Apple says about 50% faster performance. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not more than that. And the iPad Pro was never slow. My 2018 model is still really fast. So I won't be upgrading my iPad Pro to this model. But the new mini LED display, which is marketed as that liquid retina XDR display, is certainly an enticing feature. And it offers 25,000 local dimming zones for LEDs, which basically increases the contrast and the black levels, uh, bringing it similar to OLED and micro LED. It also comes with Thunderbolt 3. So basically, instead of a USB-C port, it's the same shape, it's the same connector it basically allows for improved data transfer between external storage and also better external monitor support and probably more in the future but we've got to wait and see I think with iPad OS 15 and future software updates now we've got to see if the software will actually catch up because at the moment it's still limiting Mac OS is much better for productivity and getting more done quicker so hopefully the iPad can catch up, but not in the way people are saying. I don't think they should put Mac OS on the iPad. And the new iPad Pro also gains a few other minor improvements to the camera and internals. So shockingly great Apple event, probably the best one of the year. I really enjoyed seeing what they unveiled, and I'll be looking forward to getting some hands-on with AirTags and other products, hopefully. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, because I know some of you won't like or won't agree with my opinions on the new iMac design and the opinions of the new products but have your say in the comment section down below which is also slightly below that like button.